Blessings to you all. I am Ruben Abante, and I am the senior pastor of the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. May I invite you to uh, come with us and be at the services of the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. And so I turn you over now to the sanctuary and uh, worship with us, hear the Word of God with us. Blessings again. And may I ask you to stand and please open your Bibles to Titus chapter 2 and verses 13 to 14. Titus chapter 2 and verses 13 and 14. Kanina ay uh, binasa natin ang magmula verse 11. Right now, just two verses for us. No? At dito natin ibabase ang ating mensahe sa umagang ito. Okay? Uh, may you read with me? Ha? Pasahin natin sabay-sabay ang mga talatang ito. Okay? Ready now? The verses, of course, are up in our screen. Everyone, read with me. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Manalangin tayo. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, in praise and thanksgiving that we can look into your word. We ask now, dear God, that you'd open our hearts, open our minds, and make us, Lord, just uh, to be ready uh, to receive your truth like a good soil, dear God, na ang iyong salita ay parang binhi na may tatanim po sa aming kalooban at lalago at uh, magbubunga, Panginoon. At magbubunga ng mabuting gawa, pagkilos, Panginoon, bilang iyong mga anak at bilang gawain. At inyong basbasan, Panginoon, ang mensaheng ito. For your own glory, Heavenly Father, and for your people's sake. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may please be seated. Ito pong first quarter ng taon na ito ay ating binibigyang diin ang ating first quarter focus. At ang nakalagay dito ay able to do abundantly no, as Christ's ecclesia. I was just telling our class, no, itong ating Lighthouse Enrichment and Development class kanina, na ang church o ang ecclesia ay hindi po isang passive na bagay. Rather, ito ay proactive. Okay? And my tatay, as you know, tatay Abante, ang kanyang pag-describe palagi noong araw, what we are is, ang sabi, we are not simply an organization, but we are an organism. Naalala niyo ba yan? No? Malaki po ang pagkakaiba ng just being organized no? to being an organism. Sapagkat po ang organism, ito ay may pagkilos. Okay? At uh, kinakailangan ay maunawaan natin po lahat ito. Na ang church is not a passive thing na para bang pupuntahan natin, you know, and we'll just be there and we will go out the same way. And I have been saying a while ago na ang pagkilos po ng gawain ng Panginoon ay isang pagkilos na hindi mo maaaring i-outsource. Okay? Kundi because Christ is in us. Hindi lang bilang mga individual. Okay? Now, of course, alam natin na kapag kayo sumampalataya kay Kristo at tinanggap niyo siya bilang inyong Panginoon at tagapagligtas ay nananahan siya sa atin. Naniniwala ba kayo ron? Ibig sabihin, that every born again, every Bible-believing Christian who accepts Christ in the heart ay merong indwelling of the Spirit of God. Okay? And such indwelling, mga kapatid, ay merong tinatawag na security at para sa indwelt ay merong assurance. Now, Iba po naman ang pagkilos ng Espiritu sa gawain, the people of God. Tayo bilang church, 
we are of course composed of individuals. Okay? Ang bawat individual ay miyembro. But all together, tayo po ay isang katawan. Okay? At sinasabi sa banal na kasulatan na sa pamamagitan ng kanyang salita sa atin, ito, halimbawa, we gather and we look into God's Word, sa pamamagitan ng kanyang salita, okay, ang banal na espiritu ay kumikilos sa ating lahat. And we become, as an institution, as a church, a habitation of God in the Spirit. And I have been talking about this sa ating tinatawag na doctrine class. And I just pray na lahat tayo rito, mga members ng Lighthouse, ay naunawaan ito. Iba yung indwelling ng individual. Iba yung church sa pagiging habitation of God in the Spirit. In fact, when I was contemplating on what to preach today, what to preach this morning, ay dumako sa ating, aking kaisipan yung bagay na yung question na why is it that in the book of John, at lalo doon sa kanyang mga pangako sa mga disipulo, na kanyang ibibigay ang Spirit. Why was it that the Spirit was referred to as being the Comforter? Have you ever thought about that? The Spirit, of course, is power. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you speaking to them as an ecclesia, as a body. But then, in the book of John, the Lord Jesus Christ also referred to, uh, to the Spirit as being the comforter. Sa Tagalog po ay nagbibigay sa atin ng kaaliwan. Tama ba? Hindi po kumot. Ano? Hindi iba yung comforter na kumot. <laughs> okay? Comforter. Ang tanong, why is it that the Spirit was referred to by the Lord Himself as being our comforter. Hmm. Malaking question yan. Kahit mga pastor, mga theologians, eh, minsan eh, nag, nagtataka, bakit? O oh, nga ba, bakit? Why is it that the Lord, that the Spirit was referred to as, in fact, four times the Lord referred to the Spirit as being the comforter. Well, I'd, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to be able to, you know, uh, give you a glimpse of this. No? Paano po ba na ang Espiritu ay nagiging comforter sa kanyang mga hinirang? Mag-isip tayo ng kumot. Ganon kang kumot. Ang tawag mo, Comforter, di ba? Ganon din yung kumot, di ba? Binibili nyo yung, yung tinatakip sa kama. Okay. Pero kailan ba nagiging comfort yung comforter? Think. Kailan nagiging comfort? Kailan mo masasabi na iyong nalalasap yung comfort na binibigay ng comforter? Kailan? Ha? Kapag, kapag ginamit mo, ibig sabihin, kinakailangan humiga ka sa kama. Tama? At para malasap mo at maranasan mo yung pagiging comforter, <laughs> no? at maranasan mo yung comfort ng comforter, ay eh, kinakailangan ikumot mo siya sa iyo. Tama? Gayun po ang Espiritu sa atin. Maliba na matuto tayo, na ang Espiritu ay ikilos o kumilos sa atin, hindi natin mararanasan what a comfort He is. Do you understand? Ang tanong ay ito, paano bang kumikilos ang Espiritu sa atin? Pag nananaginip tayo, how does the Spirit work in us? through this. When you take the Word of God, when you take the promises of God, 
when you take the instructions of God sa pamamagitan ng kanyang salita, when you obey His commands, okay? Kapag ginagawa natin yung mga explicit na sinasabing kalooban niya sa atin, then His Spirit works. And for what and for how He is described, ginagawa niya ang mga bagay na yun. Hanggat hindi natin kinakapitan ang pangako ng Panginoon, hindi mo malalasap na ang pangako mo yan ay totoo. Are you listening? Hanggat hindi mo tinatanggap si Kristo na ang sabi ng, pang- ng banala kasulatan, tanggapin natin siya. Tama po ba? Subalit hanggat hindi mo siya tinatanggap, hanggat hindi mo siya sinasampalatayanan, sangayon sa salita ng Diyos, hindi sangayon sa kung anong sinasabi ng iba, kundi sangayon sa salita ng Diyos, hindi mo mararanasan ng kaligtasan. You understand? Hindi mo mararanasan ang forgiveness. So that's how it is. At sa atin bilang church, bilang eklisiya, we actually will not understand. Hindi natin magagawa yung bagay na dapat natin ma-appreciate sa lahat ng mga pangako ng Panginoon sa eklisiya to the body and how we are His habitation kapag hindi natin ibinibigay ang ating sarili as a corporate body sa Kanya. I hope you're, you understand what I'm saying. Meron po tayong responsibility as individuals at meron din tayong responsibility as an ecclesia. Okay? Now, of course, ang appreciation natin sa mensaheng ito is what we are as an ecclesia, as a church. Okay? Tinatawag po natin, sabi ko kanina, alam niyo sa Tagalog Bible, minsan, o madalas, ang rendition ng church ay sa Tagalog ay iglesia. Para sa atin sa lighthouse, ugaliin natin na kapag babasahin natin, hindi iglesia, kundi eklesia. Do you understand? Yun po ang gamit natin. Hindi po bagong term yung eklesia. Yun talaga dapat ang paggamit niyan. Okay? A called out assembly with a purpose from Christ. Okay? Now, ang aking mensahe sa umagang ito ay tumatalakay doon sa verses 13 and 14. If we can go back to those verses. Ang sabi, looking for that blessed hope. Pinagpalang pag-asa na tinitingnan ika natin. Tumitingin ba kayo sa isang buhay na pag-asa at pinagpalang pag-asa? Do you want to have hope? Of course. Abay, sa kalagitnaan po ng scare ng novel coronavirus, you want to have hope. Tama? Siyempre, ayaw na ayaw mo, kaya ka naging nag-iingat eh. Pero kahit minsan nag-iingat ka, may takot ka, nawawala yung pag-iingat mo. Kaya sabi ko kanina, ugaliin natin dito, mga kapatid, na unang-una sa ating mga kalooban ay alisin natin ang takot natin. Kasi pag naunahan tayo ng takot, bibigay at bibigay ka. Did you know that? Anong gagawin mo pag natakot ka? Magpapanik ka. Magkukumahug ka. Hindi mo na maiisip yung tama kasi paniki ka na nga. Hindi ka nga kumakain ng paniki. Paniki ka naman. E di ganun din. Okay. Now, ibig sabihin, alisin natin ang takot. Magkaroon tayo ng pagtayo sa magandang pundasyon. Good? Alam niyo po, karamihan ng mga tao na takot sa dilim, sila ang minumulto. Kasi naunahan siya na ng takot. Did you know that? Pag-aralan niyo. Oo. Kung gusto niyo mag-practice, pumunta kayo rito pag hating gabi. Patayin lahat ng ilaw, makit kayo rito. Pag may takot ka, hindi ka aakyat eh. Dagdagan mo pa, makit ka sa, port, sa pit floor. Mag-isa. Umikot ka, mababa ka ron. Gawin mo ng exercise. You know, some people cannot do that. Naunahan siya na ng takot. Eh bakit ka natatakot? Kasi wala kang kauna- pag-unawa, wala kang kaalaman. Kung kaya nga po tayo, tayo ay tumatayo sa kaalaman ng salita ng Diyos upang mawala ang takot sa atin. Amen? 
Good? Okay, balikan natin. So, we need to be able to look into what we can refer to as a blessed hope for us. At ano raw po yun? The glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior. When the Lord Jesus Christ would Himself appear, hindi po lahat ng tao ay tumitingin dyan. Mas inaantay nilang sumabag yung taal. Di ba? Mas inaantay nilang magunaw na ang mundo. Tayo pong mga tunay na mana ng palataya. We do not look forward to the end of the world. Okay? We look forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. Ang sabi sa si John chapter 14, I will come again. Tama po ba? I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. At kukunin niya tayo. Pastor, totoo ba yun? Sapagkat yun na sinabi ng salita ng Diyos eh. Eh kung hindi ka sumasampalataya sa kanya, talaga hindi ko pwedeng tanganin yun. But when you believe His word, you have not just that security, you have that assurance in you. And I indeed look forward to the coming of Christ. I do not know when. Hindi ko po alam kung kailan. But I make myself ready. And we also need to do that. God, So we have this blessed hope. Now, ang sabi, <clears throat> verse 14, balikan natin yan. And I hope today, you know your hope. I hope today, also, I pray, that you indeed look forward to the coming of Christ. And if you have Christ within, and you've accepted Him, you've received Him, now you know who to look for. Okay, now look at verse 14. Can we read again, everyone? Go. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Now, some years back, about uh, four or five years ago, I tinalakay ko rin po itong talatang ito. No? And I began with verse 1, ang sabi, the grace of God appeared to all men. No? At doon nakita natin kung anong dala sa atin ang biyaya ng Panginoon. But I did not expound on this particular verse. Who gave himself for us. Now notice this. Ang sabi, us. Tama ba? Us. Ibig sabihin, while the Apostle Paul was writing to Titus, Titus was a pastor. At sinasabi niya, ito ang ituturo mo, Titus. Okay? Sa mga churches na iyong pinapasturan. And he included himself, us. Ilang beses binig- sinabi yung us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a what? A peculiar people a people zealous of good works. Now, I'd like to dwell on this sapagkat, you know, we are His ecclesia. We are His church. Do you believe that? Lahat po, lahat po na nakakilala kay Kristo sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya. And those of you who have been baptized, you are part of Lighthouse. And you might be here today, you're part of another church. That's fine. Okay? At ang bawat eklesia ay dapat mayroong pagkakilala ng ganito. Okay? I do believe that every church must indeed be a church and be able to do what a church should do. Kaya po dito sa Lighthouse, we keep on teaching people. Hindi lang tayo narito para pag aten aten tapos talabas tayo. Okay? Tama po ba? You see, the more responsibility that we have is this, that we are not only Christians, we are doing His work. Tama po ba? Good. Marami dito mga academicians. Marami dito ng mga nagtuturo. Ayaw po natin na yung mga tinuturoan natin, nakukuha yung kaalaman, hindi naman ginagamit. Tama po ba? 
Gusto natin na gagamit nila, sayang. Isipin mo, nag-aral ka ng ilang taon, naku, tumanda ka na sa kaaaral. Hindi mo naman nagamit. It's a waste. Kaya nga po dito sa Lighthouse, we try and teach our young people. Bago pa lang sila gumraduate ng high school, no, ay tinuturuan sila kung paano pumili ng course. At bago sila gumraduate sa college, ay tinuturuan sila kung paano pumili ng trabaho. At kung sila nang tatrabaho na, okay, tinuturuan naman sila kung paano lumago, ma-promote. Sapagat ayaw natin mga kapatid na wala. Stagnant lang tayo. Tama po ba? Kahit sa ating lipunan, as a lighthouse, we want to be able to do something. As a lighthouse. Kaya po, ako, daladala ko ang lighthouse kahit saan eh. And they wonder, paano nagagawa yan, Bishop? Paano nagagawa yung pastor? You know why? Because I teach our people this. Wherever I go, the church goes. Are you listening? Wherever I go, you go. If I'm active here, you can be active there. You see, we make sense everywhere. We make sense in our homes. We make sense in our communities. We make sense in your respective employments. We make sense in your respective, what, businesses. We make sense. If we cannot make sense, it's useless. At mga kapatid, hindi, binig, hindi tayo binigyan ng biyaya ng Panginoon para maging useless. Are you listening? No. Binigyan tayo ng biyaya ng Panginoon para tayo ay maging kagamit-gamit sa Kanya so that we can please Him. Few pastors will say this. You know, kaya nga, tinuturo natin dito, other ministries will tell you, ah, tayo lang to, tayo lang. We come in here as a family, we go out as a family, tayo-tayo lang ito. And you make sense just because you are doing something for your family, but you cannot go beyond your family. Are you listening? Now, as a church, we are not just families. We are a work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Okay. Now, let's do this. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Now, this verse actually, itong sinabi ni Paul kay Titus, comes as a description of what we are. Kaya ang mensahe ko po ay the people that we are. We need to understand this from this point of view. Okay? The people that we are. What kind of people are we? The kind of people we are. As an ecclesia, as a church. Are you following? Tama po ba? Andyan ba kayo? Can you say amen? Tulog na yata kayo eh. O baka naka, meron na kayong coronavirus. Babagsak na lang kayo. Alam niyo, ginigising ko lang kayo. Minsan, pa, I need to remind you this. I need to, to use the term para gisingin ko kayo. I'm talking to you as a body. I'm talking to you as a Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. Of course, we have guests here. Tama po ba? And thank you for coming here. My message to you, guests, is this, that you need your Christ in your hearts. You need to be safe. You need to be sure of glory. Okay? You need to be sure of your relationship with God, with the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to receive Christ. Okay? It is Christ you receive. You do not just receive eternal life. It is the person of Christ you receive. Okay? So what kind of people are we as a church? Number one, letter A. Uh, according to this verse, who gave himself for us. So we are that us. Ibig sabihin, mga kapatid, as a church, we are a people for whom Christ gave his very own self. Can you read this? Go. A people for whom Christ gave his own self. Wow. For a moment, tingnan po natin ang seriousness ng talatang ito. Tayo ay mga tao 
na mismo ibinigay ni Kristo ang kanyang sarili. Come on now. Madalas mga kapatid, ang gusto lang nating ibigay sa atin ni Kristo e pera. Tama ba? Madalas ang gusto natin, ang ibibigay lang sa atin ni Kristo ay tagumpay. Correct. Success. Madalas, mga kapatid, ang tingin natin kay Kristo ay bibigyan lang dapat tayo ng kalusugan. Yun lang ang kailangan ko. But can you imagine, mahigit pa ro ng kanyang ibinigay sa atin. He gave His very own self. Makinig kayo maigi. Sino ba rito ang gustong gumraduate? Galing ba saan yung iyong maaaring paggraduatean? Mga kapatid, isipin natin ito. We are a bunch of people <clears throat> na hindi tayo recipient ng kung anong material lang. We are a people na kung sino, mga kapatid, ibinigay niya ang kanya mismong sarili, yung kanyang pinakabuhay, yung kanyang dugo. Nakikinig ba kayo? Bakit ang tingin mo kay Kristo, kailangan mo lang sa kanya, swerte? Ba't ang kailangan mo lang sa kanya, posisyon? Ba't ang kailangan mo lang sa kanya, degree? Ba't ang kailangan mo lang sa kanya, titulo? At yun lang ang tingin natin kay Kristo. Samantalang, He did more than what we really were asking. He gave His own self. Si minsan iniisip natin, para sa akin lang, it's a personal thing. Pero teka muna, corporate yun eh. It's us. Tama po ba? As a body. Listen to me, Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. And you who say you're part of this church, you who say you're a member of this church, you who say you eat spiritual food sa church na ito, listen! The Lord Jesus Christ gave His very own self for us. For us. Balik tayo sa illustration ng guru. Kasi naisip ko guru kasi ako yung chairman ng aming batch eh. Eh, yung professor nung mga kemeng sa pamantasan, eh, nagpunta kami, pumasyal. Andun pa hanggang ngayon? After 45 years? Wow! Tapos sabi niya, eh, o oh, ano na kayo ngayon? Eh, hindi niya naman ako naging estudyante dahil electronics ako eh. Nakita niya, ay, ito si Bishop, hindi ko ito makakalimutan. Ba, sabi ko, okay ah. Hindi naman niya ako naging estudyante. Sabi niya, pero kayo, hindi ko kayo makakalimutan eh. I gave my time for you all. Ano, alam niyo ba ako anong bearing nun? Ibig sabihin, bilang guru, bilang professor, hindi, siya lang, hindi lang siya nagturo isa-isa, kundi he extended himself to the whole class. Tama ba? And he expected na yung buong klase ay maging successful. Ano naman natin i-relate sa Panginoon? He did more than that? And we cannot imagine, can we actually as a corporate body do something because of that sacrifice as a body? Tama po ba? Bakit puro individual lang iniisip natin? Bakit puro pamilya lang iniisip natin? But He purchased, look at this, look at this, Ephesians 5.25 Anong sinasabi? Ephesians 5.25 Ang sabi dito, Husbands, love your wives. Wow! Alam niyo, pag binabasa ng mga wives ito, yun ang nakikita. Kaya pag binabasa, oh, nagingitian yung mga asawang babae. Even as Christ also loved the church. Can we put Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church there? 
Ano nakalagay? Even as Christ also loved Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. And look at what's next. And He gave Himself for the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. Does that make sense? Ibig sabihin, mga kapatid, He gave value to us as a people. Why can't you not give value to us as a people? Are you listening? Now, look at this. Doon po sa, sa Galatians chapter 1 and verses 3 to 5. Ito ang sinasabi. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave Himself for us that we might be, that we, that He might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Look at Ephesians 5, 2. Ang sabi, and walk in love. Turn to Ephesians 5.2. Appreciate this today. Sino ba yung sinulatan ni Paul sa Ephesians? E di yung church episodes. Tama ba? Ibig sabihin, ang kausap niya is one whole entity. One whole corporate body. The Ephesian church. And he says this, Walk in love. As Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Ang ginagawa natin, listen very closely, we are giving value to us as God's people. And I pray that lahat tayo sa lighthouse would realize this. Kung kaya nga even the Apostle Paul, anong sabi ni Paul sa Galatians 2.20 Ang sabi niya, I am crucified with Christ. I'm dead. I'm crucified. Nevertheless, I live. But yet not I, but Christ is the one living in me. And the life which I now live in this flesh, I move, I eat, I study, no, I have a job, but I live this life by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Does that make sense? As a corporate body, as a people of God. Secondly, ano sinasabi? Doon sa binasa nating talata kanina, ano nakalagay? No? Ang sabi, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us. Ibig sabihin mga kapatid, we are a people redeemed. Redeemed from all iniquity. Ano ibig sabihin ng redeem? Bought back. Okay? Yun ang redeem. Bought back. Bucket bought back. Well, in the first place, mga kapatid, we are gods by creation. Okay? But sin took hold of us and took hold of us away from Him. Our sin separated us from God. Okay? Pero hindi maaari that we can be reconciled back to God without sin being addressed. Without sin being penalized. Tama? For the wages of sin is death. So what did Christ do? He took the penalty. He took the penalty ng ating pagkakasala. He paid the ransom price. Kung kaya nga ang sabi, He redeemed us. Now you understand? Ibig sabihin mga kapatid, as a body, as a church, we are a blood-bought throng. Yun ang inaawit namin nung araw. And it took the very blood of Christ to redeem us. 
Look at Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Ano sabi rito? Ni Apostle Paul. He was talking to the elders doon sa Ephesus. He said, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he what? Purchased with his own what? Blood. Wow. Let me say this. As a corporate body, we've been purchased by his own blood. Is that truth? It is. It's what the Bible says. Pero ang hindi maganda sa mga nag-a-attend ng church, akala nila they have all the options and they have all the things to spare for their own selves. Kung kaya nga mga kapatid, ang daming gustong mag-church pero wala, wala, as in wala. It's hard to be a church. But we need to understand how to be a church. Alam niyo, I talk to a lot of pastors. And I tell them, you see, tayo mga pastor, minsan nakala natin, yung church ay para sa atin lang. Pinagkikitaan natin yung mga churches. Akala natin, survival mode natin yan. No. Are you listening? The hardest thing to do for a pastor is this. To build a church into what a church should become. Tama ba? Oh yes. Ang daming nagpapastor-pasturan eh. Nakatayo lang sa likod ng pulpito. Tapos nakapag-recite ng verse. Pastor na. My goodness. Hindi mo nga alam kung paano mong i-raise yung mga buhay ng tao. Tama po ba? May kinalaman tayo sa lahat. Mabuti na lang sa atin sa Lighthouse, ang ating ministry from womb to tomb. Lahat sa klaw. Tama po ba? Eh minsan, nina-extend ko yung sarili ko sa lahat. May kahapon may kausap ako. Kasi sabi niya, Pastor, please, kausapin mo itong partner ko. I want your blessing sa business ko. Ito na naman tayo. Gusto mo lang ako pag blessing sa business mo eh. Pag nakawala na ako at kumikita ka na nakakalimutan mo na yung church eh. Nakalimutan mo na ako na ibibigay mo. Nakalimutan mo na yung oras mo. Nakalimutan mo na lahat. Dahil ang tingin mo sa akin, pang blessing mo lang ako. Kaya usap ko yung partner niya. Kristiyano daw siya. And I was very straightforward. See, I am not doing this because I am not a fortune teller. I am a pastor. And I preach God's word. And he said, I appreciate. Ayun. Minsan, a pastor should be straightforward that way. At gigisingin natin ng lahat. Tama po ba? Alam niyo, sa kapatid ko, ang dahil pumupunta, minority leader. Sabi ko sa kapatid ko, Tol, pati ako, iniistorbo mo eh. Bakit? Eh, nagpupuntahan. Pag hindi, maka- sa akin nagpupuntahan eh. Eh, pasensya ka, kapatid kita eh. Ano ba talaga gusto nila sa'yo? Ang gusto nila, yun lang. Sipin mo, ang dami namin naging kamag-anak ngayon na hindi namin kinala. Kasi yun lang ang gusto eh. Eh, hindi naman taga, hindi naman taga 6 district yung mga yan. Ba't ginagawa natin yan kahit sa Panginoon? Nakikinig ba kayo? We're live on television. And I say this very categorically. Why? Yes, sapagkat yan ang nangyayari sa maraming Christian sa atin bansa. Tama? Kita niyo ang ating mga kababayan. Anong gusto, sa, anong gusto sa gobyerno? Gusto ng ginhawang buhay. Pero ginagawa ba natin yung parte natin? Hindi. Ayaw natin eh. Kasi pakabig tayo lahat. Samantalang ang dapat, we please Him. We please God. We have been redeemed. And we have been redeemed, bin, binili tayo from all iniquity sa lahat ng kasiraan. Kaya nung tayo niredeem, when the Lord Jesus Christ gave Himself for us, using His very own blood, binili niya tayo, inihangon niya na tayo 
so that iniquity will not overtake us. Sin will not overtake us. Hindi eh. Ang gusto natin, we still have our own lives. Sayang po kasi, pastor. Sayang. Alam niyo mga kapatid, hindi tayo kristyano para maghirap. May paraan upang ipagyaman tayo. Tama? Nung araw, itong pogo na ito, talagang pogo, galit na galit ako dyan eh. Ayun, pinadaan nila, ano nangyari ngayon? Nilabasan niya mga masasama. Colossians 1.14 In whom we have redemption, through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, 18 to 19. Anong sabi dito? For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition of your, from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Number three. We are a people purified and made peculiar. Tayo as a church ay mga tao, mga niligtas that we have been purified, ginawang dalisay and we were set apart for Him. Listen, ginagawa tayong dalisay ng salita ng Diyos. Okay? Nakikinig ba kayo? Hindi ako nagpapadalisay sa atin. Ang salita ng Diyos ang nagpapadalisay sa atin. Bakit tayo ginagawang dalisay? How? Ano yung proseso? Whenever we look at God's Word, we see ourselves. Nagiging salamin natin ang salita ng Diyos. We realize what we are. Okay? At pag, na, pag nakita natin, pag aralan natin, sinasabi ng banal na kasulatan, we see ourselves to be so sinful before God. What comes next? The Spirit convicts us and we come to God and we make our lives and hearts right with Him. That is the cleansing thing. You understand? Kung kaya nga mga kapatid sa lighthouse, every time I preach, palagi tayong merong altar call. Palagi tayong may invitation so that we can come before God and purify ourselves. Tama po ba? Eh, hindi na uso yung ngayon yung nagpo-forward eh. Pero sa lighthouse, uso pa rin yun. Why? sapagkat nakikita natin how the Spirit works in our lives, ang puso ng tao ay matigas na. We need to come to God. Tama po ba? Marami na nga nananalangin yun. Eh. Wala, nang, wala nang galang sa panalangin. Eh. Anong tawag sa ano? Si Lord. Oh. Akala ko kung sinong kausap na Jesse tinatawag, Panginoon pala. Can you imagine that? Okay. Now, Ang sabi po rito ng Panginoon sa John 15.3, Now ye are clean. Ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. We have been sanctified and set apart for Him. We are a people set apart for God. Now listen very closely. I, you, I might touch where you live today. Tayo pong lighthouse, we are set apart for God. Yung sabi ng batas ng separation of church and state, iba yun. Ibig sabihin, walang kinalaman si President Duterte sa pamalakad dito. At wala akong kinalaman kung paano siya nagiging presidente. Okay? Pero tayo bilang Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church, we are set apart for God. For everything about God, for all the work about God, for how God will be in our society, for wherever God should be in our society. Kikinig ba kayo? We are set apart for God. Kung kailangan na ang ating Panginoon ay mapunta sa gobyerno, gagawin natin yun. Kung kinakailangan na ang ating Panginoon ay mapunta sa akadim, gagawin natin yun. Kung, kung kinakailangan na ang gobyerno ay mapunta sa lipunan, gagawin natin yan because we are the ones set apart for all the work related to God. Kaya wag nating ihiwalay ang ating sarili sapagkat pag inihiwalay natin ang ating sarili, mawawala ang godliness sa ating lipunan. Do you understand? That's just the bottom line of it. 
You know, I was asked, maraming humingi sa akin ng endorsement. Humingi ng endorsement bilang chaplain, humingi ng endorsement bilang ganito, ganyan. Pinalmahan ko. Kinausap ko. Kaya kita ina-endorse ay para dalhin si Kristo sa kung saan ka nandun. Hindi kita endorse para magkaroon ka ng titulo para sa iyo. Nakikinig po ba tayo? At kung ano man ang tinatanggap natin sa Panginoon, we use that so that we can be used wherever we are. Kaya mga businessmen, kayo mga nasa business, kayo nagmamayari ng mga businesses, kayo nasa mga trabaho, you, you, you bring the Lord Jesus Christ wherever you are. Start Bible studies there. Amen? Start to be a witness because we are set apart for God and are being peculiar above the usual kind of people, we can do that because we're above the usual. Hindi tayo pang good manners and right conduct lang. Pabalyos, balyos ka pa. Nasaan ang Panginoon? Tama ba? I was talking with Alan Peter. Speaker Alan Peter. Sabi ko, speaker, alam mo, I praise God for Rene. I told him that. We were having dinner. Sabi niya, Bishop, alam mo si Rene. Talagang family na namin yan, sabi niya. Alam mo, every time he would give yung mga portion ng mga scholars, he has 58,000 scholars sa tagig. And every time yung scholarship nila ay ibibigay, Rene would preach. And Rene would send me a text, Pastor, I was able to preach to students and even parents. Can we do this as churches? Can we do this as God's people? Lastly, matatapos ko sa dalawang minuto. Sipin mo. Ano yung huli? We are a people zealous of action. Zealous of good works. Zealous of service. Zealous of ministry. Zealous, zealous of lifting up. Zealous of exhorting. Zealous of giving. Amen? Ay, wala. Wala nag-amen. Pag natigil to, hindi tayo church. Because you know why? We've been made that way. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Again, here the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Ephesus and he tells them, we are his workmanship. The Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church is one single workmanship. We are created in Christ and we have been created to good works, to good action, to service, to ministries, to everything we can do for God and to everything that pleases Him. Do you understand what we are? Settle ourselves in it. We are Christ's. Let's stand and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, dear God. This is a message that pierces hearts makes us realize what we are, makes us see how we are before you. Many times we care to see how we are in this world, how we are to our friends, how we are to our peers, but we don't look at how we are before you. Speak to us, Lord, today. And may your spirit, Lord, really convict us. We want to come to you and to be able to say, Lord, make us to be what we should be as your people, the people that we are before you. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Many works are established around the world, but millions are still untold. The field is white for the harvest of God. Are you still burdened for the lost? 
What happened to your commitment? What happened to your love? It's time to rekindle your love for souls. Don't lose your love. is plenty use but the laborers are few don't lose your love the field is waiting for you some missions are suffering around the globe persecuted for the love of the Lord the sake of the gospel, they're still competent, but my heart is so cold. What happened to your giving? What happened to your support? Are you still burdened for the plenty use but the laborers are few don't lose your love the field is waiting for you our program today I hope you were blessed but one thing about this I hope that the Word of God came so clear and how that through the Lord Jesus Christ you can come and uh, receive eternal life and be forgiven of your sins whoever you are wherever you are whatever your condition is the only thing that we need to do is this to admit before God that we need him that we are sinners and once we do admit then we come to him in prayer recognizing that Jesus Christ died on the cross and how he was buried and he rose again and then we receive him in our lives and in our hearts as Savior and Lord let me just lead you in this prayer you can pray with me and you can say 
Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me on the cross. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for how you looked at me even in my being a sinner. I admit I am a sinner. And I am coming to you through the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of my sin. And I accept you into my heart as my Savior and as my Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for eternal life. I recognize that now you are my Lord and my Savior. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, then celebrate with us. Maybe you can write us, you know, send us some word that through this program, you receive Christ and how this program blessed your heart. God bless you.